Hey yo, little man, what's going on everyone? Nick here from Little Man YGO, back at again with another video. And this time we have a second place Amaryllis Burn, actually Amaryllis Burn, uh, deck profile and gameplay review from the Ultimate Time Wizard of Tournament in YCS Sydney. Now, before we jump into anything, we are at 602 subscribers. And look, beautiful banner on the channel. We changed the icon to a, like a little man. Like, you know, a little man, you fit him in the palm of your hand. So beautiful. But thank you so much for all the love and support we give been given to the channel so far we're crossing the 600 subscriber mark we're trying to make our way up to a thousand so you know we can get monetized and make three dollars a video and uh we can't do so without your help so please subscribe if you've not done so already i will wait also discord link in the description below um where you can come hang out with team little man uh, it's not just myself it's all the other boys that are on my team where we just cook and cook you know deck ideas and we all love each other it's 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 so beautiful in there so come hang out with us all right so for those of you who did not were not this really flew under the radar for quite some time i didn't even know this was a thing until like the other day someone pointed it out to me but um there was an ultimate time wizard tournament at ycs sydney ycs sydney did not have a lot of coverage even for the modern event so um the fact that this kind of went under the radar was just kind of crazy within itself right but um as you see here Amaryllis did get second place at this ultimate time wizard which is you know massive congratulations to the individual i believe his name is simon uh from the video in the deck profile i'll leave that that the link to the original video in the description below as you go over some of his rationale there so um he did play the volcanic counters in the main deck, which is really cool because you don't. You, the last time someone did well with the volcanic counters in the main deck was uh, Carpath when he initially topped with the uh, first list. So um, I think it's very cool to see something like this again. Obviously, I don't think the counters are the most optimal way to play the deck whatsoever, but. Um, you know, obviously, it seems like that it still could have success in today's meta game, and there are moments where I do want to try that I have tried putting the counters into the main deck and my counter list is looking it looks very similar to this one there's a couple of differences uh, between here and there but um just kind of pointing out there's 20 monsters in the main deck we're on the triple raiko still um lila is not in the main deck here i don't know i think that lila is just so important of being a proactive miller but in a way i kind of understand because like you just kind of can't leave lila in attack mode when you do or if you are milling out volcanic counters you kind of want to optimize your raiko pop so that when your opponent is tacking into you, uh, you're you're um, increasing the burn threshold through Volcanic Counter. Um, a couple of things in the spell card lineup. Burial in the main deck. Obviously, you have to have Burial in the main deck if you are playing the Volcanic Counters itself. Card Destruction in the main deck, too. I mean, this is like the brickiest version of the deck itself. There's like so many cards that you just want to discard and put in the graveyard. So like when you do see this card, it's just absolutely insane every single way. Uh, brain control in the main deck i always thought that this variant of the list should ha have this card in the main deck it just you're able just to steal games out of nowhere with it and like just uh, swiping over two cards just so you're able to like have your damage output is absolutely insane so i, I really do like that there uh the trap lineup uh it's fairly standard you know you have the, the the mirror force phoenix wing which is the giga trad you know this card trap it is so much more superior than any other discard trap. I don't care what anybody says. You know, fight me. Actually, don't. Subscribe instead. Subscribe, not fight. Peace, not love. No, peace, not war, baby. Come on. He has also called the haunted in the main deck here. Um, uh, Through his initial profile, he said that this card was pretty, you know, mediocre. Um, I in the games that I played and I saw this card, it was it was okay for what it was. I always like to call the haunted in this uh in this type of deck, especially when you're milling so much. But uh the problem is is that like you don't have the like the proactive mills like you once had, and you also don't have Sangin in the main deck either, which is like one of the biggest reasons to play cards like this, because like if you do mill Sangin, um, then it's not like the most dead thing in the world. You could just kind of set the call to haunted as a, a bluff, and if you try to out it, you could chain the call, get the Sangin. Sangin will either float to low fire blossom, card trooper, or even sometimes plague spreader to convert the uh the discard traps out of the hand. Um, yeah, obviously morphing during the main deck too. Thank goodness gracious, this card's insane in this deck. I mean, it's it filters through your entire deck. But this is a fairly all gas, no bricks kind of version. So I do like that a lot. Uh, moving over to the side deck here. Uh, double Cyber Dragon, very good. Uh, triple DD Crow. So three DD Crows in the main deck, which is absolutely wild. Um, 
to me, there, there's just so much engine requirement in the deck that like I don't ever have a room to side three of this card. So I'm very curious to see like what he took it out for stuff along the lines of this because like this with like oh my god, I'm yawning again. Jesus, it's 8 30 in the morning. Come on, like give me a break. Oh my goodness. But like, yeah, you know, with this and I guess you put out boy out card destruction there, MST here. Not so bad. Like, obviously, you're putting in some Blackwing stuff. Soul Release. Um, Obviously, you don't see the Fiend, Fiend Comedians in the side deck. I think this is, like, the side deck, too. Put the Fiend Comedians in. And even, like, if you're trying to put counters in your deck, main decking a Comedian or two, is it might not be even a bad idea just to uh really build your damage multiplier, like, super fast or just, like, blow out your opponent if they have too much stuff in Graveyard. Uh, but Soul Release, as always, in Amaryllis does have its spots because, like, you could always, like, just banish, like, one of your dudes out of your graveyard just to make your DDR alive. So it's very cool synergy there. Uh, trap Cards, Double Bottomless Trap Hole, Double Royal Decree, uh, Double Royal Depression, and Double Pulling the Rug. So, you know, Bottomless is against the Black Wings. And he, in his tournament report, I think he said that he did not play against Black Wings at all. So, obviously, you know... If you have a good solid run with solid matchups, I mean, like it's you're you're de destined to do well. Decree's beautiful card. Roll oppression in this version of the deck. Um, this is the list. This is, in my opinion, the volcanic counter list is the list that lo loses to roll oppression the least or could best support it because like you're gonna get your opponent so down fast, uh, ideally with volcanic counters and slow down the game with this. Um, you do take life for just their bad for special summoning too. So it's like I always felt this card was kind of okay, but like having this card established underneath Titania when you already have Titania established is just absolutely delicious. And then obviously pulling the rug. Um, yeah, I, I it, it, this might have a slot in my side deck. I, I've been toying around with trying to throw this card in my side deck. I'm not entirely sold on it yet, but um, very good inclusion there and making sure that you're stopping Caius's or Divas so you don't have to deal with the Catastor. Mm. Oh my goodness, that was a big yawn there. Uh, it's not because I'm bored of my own content. My content's fire, but you, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Um, extra deck, fairly standard. Uh, the one thing here that he does play that I've not seen anyone else play was Revive King Hades. Um, so this is, I guess, the option that he playing instead of Doom Kaiser Dragon, which I definitely do respect. I mean, you could take the monster that they have, and you know they're setting their recruiters, but um, you know I think that, uh, and then you get to run over their monster. So if you like Mark or Brain Control, their Zombie Master, and then like you make the Plague Spreader, you can definitely take advantage of that if you're playing against zombies. You're not dropping the entire tournament. I do think that Doom Kaiser is a bit better though, in my opinion, especially if you're playing this list because Doom Kaiser is at least a fire. Where if you put the fire in the graveyard, you don't have to worry about like Lone Fire or Amaryllis is sticking around the graveyard to make sure that Volcanic Counter is alive. So let's just jump into some replays that I did have with the deck overall. First of uh, we're, we're playing it's night, not day, night with two eyes. My goodness. All right. So we went RPS. Um, he's on 41 cards. I'm on 40. He's playing gadgets with autonomous action. You need know, royal pressure. God damn. Savagery. So we open up the Stone Cold Crazy. You know, we have double hidden army. So I might as well try to thin out the deck here. And we able we are able to hit Lone Fire Blossom off the top. We're just so good. So we trade in the Amarillo. So we 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 do this first before we trade in just so to ensure that we're not drawing any of the equip spells because um trying to play the game. But we're able to set the wing bosses up, bash lone fire, get the Amaryllis past the turn. He draws Cyber Dragon, summons the gadget. Gadgets in, against Amaryllis. I mean, gadget is a very like mid matchup for Amaryllis because like you just have so many creatures that just plus off each other. But um uh, we're wing blasting at the end phase. He just bluff set the fissure, which is kind of based. I'm with it. But we wanted to make sure our DDR, DDR play does go off here. So we're able to get Lone Fire. Lone Fire, send the other Lone Fire, grab Titanial. Um, the reason why we do it that way is because we don't actually want to draw Lone Fire on our following turn because we do have Hidden Armory to get back the DDR. Uh, attack over 4, 1400 there. Got, dropping him to a nice 58. Uh, we're going to set the Torrential there. End phase uh get back the amaryllis past turn pick up fisher totally fine so we reg, reg gadgets and the green gadgets um well into yellow gadgets man i i've i missed my uh my traffic lights i got that all wrong holy shit so he attacks over that and you know we ping another 800 over to him titanio dies he sets the card and passes turn uh we draw a call the haunted which is like a pretty nice pickup there um we set and pass draws another gadget which is like just the the beauty of drawing gadgets, what could you say? 
Uh, he attacks over for 1300, which is strange because he's able, he triggers the volcanic counter in the graveyard, uh, putting him down to 30, should be 37. Uh, whatever. That's okay. I got to make call the haunt. He has an impression in. Holy shit. Like, oh, 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 he does. He does. Okay. But here's, here's the deal here. We do see Royal Oppression get bamboo try to with bamboozle us essentially right but he's down to 28 as it is right now so it's already kind of doing the job for us um but he summons other gadget we're aiming to try to get the our plus back with torrential um so we flip torrential here he grabs the yellow red gadget who cares um and then he just sits and passes a turn we draw a card trip which is a fantastic pickup we're able to mill three from the top of our deck uh we do get dandelion um he what the Plans to negate the Danny line by paying 800. Um, and then we attack directly with the card trooper, which is going to, which has to eat the mirror force there. Yeah. And you know, when we're mirror forcing a card trooper that like you're in a super bad spot, we set, we try to go Amaryllis um, and he ended up letting it go, which is very nice. So uh, we get her back and then we pass and then he missed the feet there because we do have all kind of counter in the graveyard. He's taking another 800 from that. So um you know, again, it's not like that this variant is like bad in any stretch of the imagination, but like it, there, you do have those brickier moments with high, it's like a high rolly version of the deck where the deck already feels kind of high rolled. All right. So, game number two, we're going to see him summon a gadget. His uh, head's a lot more better than it was last time, but he puts a card down past his turn. We set the crease at Wing Blast. Yeah, the Wing Blast gets taken care of. He summons the gadget, gadget search. Very cool. Um, and then attacks over for 13 and then 12. Sets for turn passes. We normal summon out Lone Fire, Lone Fire effect. We want to send out the whole cards from the deck. And then we decide that he decides to torrential. We chain roll decree. Um, obviously, we don't end phase decree because he did not put two in the back row. So we want to make sure that we are end phasing decreeing when there's only one in the back row, which is pretty good. Uh, so we're thinking, you know, we end up firing, trying to fire card destruction because, like, we want to stop all the targeting removal in the world or wait for him to out our royal decree. Um, so Danny Lion is going to give us our two tokens here. Unfortunately, he does pick up Smashing Ground, which is shit. Um, he just got a whole bunch of gadgets, too. So, like, he's almost out of gadgets within his deck, or at least he should be, until I see him summon another yellow gadget and then, like, search the third green from the deck. Now, I have seen... I have seen with my own two eyes people play three green gadgets and two and two of the other ones, which is whack a source if you ask me. But people do it, so I, I don't know. I don't know. We top deck foolish, which is pretty good. So we end up having we have burial in hand too. So we have like a lot of gas. He doesn't have trap cards to stop us either. Uh, but we're getting back Amaryllis here. We're passing our turn. He draws DD Crow, uh, red gadget search. Um, he goes to attack over, takes 800 there, um, attacks over with the green gadget, that's Volcanic Counter, and then, Volc and then Volcanic Counter is going to trigger there, and then we're going to be at the similar amount of life points. He Heavy Storms out Royal Decree, which is crazy, but you know this is where we have to make a big play here. So I think we're going to hit an armor here. We mill, unfortunately, another one. We're going to get uh, Mark of the Rose from the deck. Um... We probably should have DDR if I'm gonna be honest with you. Um I played that way too conservatively, if you if you if you if I dare say so myself. But um I was thinking of just like trying to clear the creatures, and then he decides to like just randomly crow me, which is fine. Because at the end phase, we're gonna burial, put a bunch of dudes back, and then he hits us with the solemnest of Jays. Yeah. It happens. I mean, like, and that's the thing. Like, if he solemn the DDR because, you know, for reasons, I mean, he could have compulsed it too. I mean, there was not much we could have done this game anyway. Um, put a little bit behind, but like, you know, there we go with the volcanic calories not doing what we want them to do, which is fine. He comes out the fortress and attacks for game. He says, Good night, nice says good night to me. My goodness, my goodness gracious. So we open our hand, and our hand is like so good in every stretch of the imagination. Um we did we don't fire out the thin the deck so we don't draw any more of those but um he just randomly dd Cro okay so i just want to make a, a a comment about dd crowing just a ran random amaryllis before it's the end phase this is actually technically correct because like 
I don't have a monster that's banished off of Amaryllis to get back with DDR herself. So, but we have foolish to get the other guy in the graveyard. So we're banishing, getting a uh, cluster back, passing turn. Normal summon green gadget. We're going to pulling that. Throw the rug. We're going to negate with Titania and phase the Kree. And then we have DDR as the follow up. We're able to get so aggressive here. Get the other Titanium out of the deck and he just scoops it up from there. All righty, Rue. Okay, so pulling. Pulling the rug, having applications outside of the standard um, uh, froggy matchup, but we we're playing against whack wings because we you know we we can't call it black wings. We call it black wings because the swallow's nest. You know, like that's bizarre. But like whatever, we do what we do. Uh, we fire titania. We set to pass. We did not need a set to here, but like, what are you gonna do? So he summons the Bora and decides to set those and pass. We get Call the Haunted back at the end phase. We draw card destruction, which is straight cocaine. So we're going to fire that card right now. And this is where card destruction really shines. It shines in like moments like these where like... And then we draw all of our level 8 dudes, which is, which is you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! Give it, Yu-Gi-Oh! Take it. This is the way of Yu-Gi-Oh! Okay, so he's trying to figure out what he wants to do here. But um, he deprisons. We chain Dandelion which doesn't do anything. We're on Fanfaro ITA. So, dude's Italian. It, it, it's funny. I, I don't know. There's some stereotype on Dueling Book about Italians specifically. I mean, like, it, I think it's the only other people who do play Yu-Gi-Oh! a lot are the Italians. I mean, you know, but the, the Italians are people of culture, I gotta say. You know why they're people of culture? Because they like Go Format over there more than Edison Format. Those Go Format tournaments that are hosted uh, by GCI over in italy get like 150 people which is absolutely fucking crazy so uh shout out to the italians for being people of culture and liking that format more than this format i have a tremendous amount of respect for you so you know it's blizzard blizzard gets back the uh bora bora gets the goyo goyo crashes with titania we take that trade every single day of the week um Passes and draws. We're able to fire heavy here. We have no reason not to. So we have all that delicious stuff done. We summon Amaryllis because we can. And then we just attack over with um, for 16 each, dropping him down to 900. And um, we do have plants in the graveyard. So we end up banishing two, getting both back, um, and then just passing the turn from there. He goes Mistral. We don't care. We're just switching everything to attack, swinging in, and then that is the game. That is the game of Rooney's there. Um, and he's like, what? And then he's like, poor K. I mean, that's not Italian, but like, you know what I mean? So uh, we win there. We go to a rematch there because it was like a single or whatever. Because, you know, we want to play some randoms. Like, we just want to play some randoms. And we see our hand. We draw another gross car destruction, which is crazy. So, um, Card Sharks is going to go crazy here, but you're going to notice like really quickly that like there are so many times where you play versions of this deck and you're like, holy shit, I, I need Card Destruction in this hand. You say that a lot to yourself, like a lot. So we're going to fire Card Destruction right here and we're going to draw four cards and we're going to get two tokens, which is pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Um, So he draws a bit more optimally. Can't complain. Uh, mill three he gets i get two more tokens here which is absolutely bananas and then we run face first into Iker d prison which is fine and phase we do have um amaryllis coming back he decides to icarus us which is fine getting rid of our decree and our amaryllis um he did not take 800 yet so we got to remind our opponent to take 800 and we get back the amaryllis at the end phase he, vi he values Sirocco's into arm wing, summons out the fossil dyna, attacks. Um, so we actually made a little misclicky there, but he takes 800. So we have to always remind our opponent about 800. Again, we have the storm, so we're going to storm him because we need to have this fossil dyna. Super duper bad. Um, we end up getting Mark of the Rose here. Activate Mark of the Rose, taking the arm wing. Arm wing running over fossil dyna, dealing 1,100 points of damage. Um, and then we set burial and pass because if we were to draw, if he draws heavy, we're all good in the neighborhood. We don't care. So he gets his arm wing back and then he normal summons Shura. We don't care about Shura. So, um, he's 
does not he he reveals Kulu to me, which is bananas, but he, I guess he did do that. But he pulls Gale right out of the deck, attacks over the token. He decides to throw out Black Rose Dragon and then nuke the field. We chain Burial, putting all these monsters back into the graveyard, um, which is nice because it refuels our Amaryllis there. Uh, we have Wing Blast, so we just set and pass. We get back the Cluster Amaryllis, pass turn. He activates, he fires Heavy Storm, Normal Summons Blizzard, activates Blizzard, gets back Shura, you know, the one card synchro combo. Uh, he's going to draw Brio. And I'm like, watch this guy just like give me trade in. And if we look at our graveyard, we only have one trade in left in deck. So uh, do we draw it? And the answer is yes, we did. So he sees that and he's like, wow boppity boppity boo you know or, or but you know what i mean in italian my goodness and it's like wow funny and i'm like yeah it happens dual monsters and then after that we hit the Raikou into him and we're just smelling three we get counter in the graveyard and it's like we're gonna swing in with this and then he's gonna die and it's gonna be awesome so uh he emits defeat there which is super cool and and like look Again, like one of the downsides of playing the counters in the deck is that sometimes you just have them in your hand or something to do about it. But um, yeah, that's the deck. Um, very cool. Like it's it's not it's very similar to the deck that yeah, top before. I think that there are a couple of changes that were made in the main deck. I know he did say he liked to call the haunted. So I guess like some changes that I would make for myself is dropping the call out for the third Phoenix wing. I think he had to play three wing bucks, and especially in a deck like this. Um. But uh, this deck was really cool. Congrats to this person who got second place at the Ultimate Time Wizard and sitting you down in Australia. And, um, you know, hopefully they stay away from the snakes down there. But please, like, comment, and subscribe for more Amaryllis, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Retro, all the fun stuff-related content. And I'll see you guys later on in the week. Peace! Have a great day. Stay safe.